this uh, receiver in this uh, salt tank here about 15, 20 minutes ago. And we're kind of going by our little uh, thermo thermometer on the wall. And uh, it's up to about the right bluing temperature. And these are new salts we just changed out this week, so it doesn't take very long. So uh, we're going to pull this receiver out and uh, take a look at it. We're going to put it in the cold water and rinse it off. And uh, we're going to look at it. Then we have a black receiver. It's uh, nice and black. See the hand of the our magazine tube here, all kind of cruddy where it was hanging out in the salts. No, we don't care about that because we're going to buff that off. Anyway, we're going to come right over here and put it right in some boiling water. And this is just hot boiling water, which all this does, it just cooks out the salts out of the threads and the screw holes. We're just going to kind of lay it in there carefully. There again with my handle sticking out that, my magazine tube, that's just something to hang on to. We're going to boil this in hot water for, oh, five or ten minutes just to kind of get the, uh, uh, get the uh, salts out of the uh, nooks and crannies and the screw hole. Then immediately after we pull it out of there, we're going to head over and push it in a, uh, a water soluble oil and hang it up the drain and uh, then it's clean up time. We're going to go up and assemble it. So that's the phase we're in right now. All right, a few days ago we uh, did a batch of uh, re-blues and uh, had, I don't know, seven or eight um, Auto 5 receivers to blue at the time, and we blew them the other day, and as you remember last time we were down that tank, we were just kind of hanging receivers in there, and magazine tubes were sticking up out of the receiver. Well, we're down to the point now where we're into the assembly work. We just kind of run production line on these. We, we'll blue eight or ten uh, complete guns, and then we'll uh, sit down and spend several days just assembling. So um, we've got one here all broke down in pieces that we blued the other day. Uh, as you can see, I haven't really polished anything up on it yet. We've got um, the old magazine tube where it's stuck up out of the bluing salts. And uh, it's kind of cruddy looking. We're going to buff that off, polish that off. We've got the small parts here uh, that, are, uh, uh, that have to be cleaned up. And uh, uh, we've got a gold plate to trigger yet. Here's an old rusty trigger. We're going to gold plate that trigger. Uh, we're going to polish the uh, bolt and the carrier and the follower so everything looks new when we put it back together. We're going to get all that rust that's off that uh, on that carrier and the rust off the bolt. We're going to buff that. And uh, then we're going to clean up our magazine tube. I'm going to polish this, uh, this uh, blue off the tube so it uh, uh, is all slick and shiny. You want a good smooth magazine tube on an Auto 5 because that has a lot to do with the way the gun works. Uh, a magazine tube that's galled or dirty or got bluing on it is going to cause a lot of drag. Your friction pieces won't slide like they should, so it's imperative that you clean up that magazine tube good. So we're going to step over to the buffer here next, and we're going to start buffing our bolt and our carrier and our parts and our magazine tube, and then we'll just carry on from there. We uh, have stepped over to our buffing wheels. Now around here we call buffing wheels. We use Tampico wheels. We don't use actual rag wheels very often at all. Uh, they're just a brushy wheel, uh, about like a, it's a Tampico brush. You go buy one in the store, that's what you got on. We've got it in the form of a wheel. And we use some stick compounds on it, such as so, and we'll treat that wheel with these stick compounds. And on occasion, we even have a liquid compound. Uh, we call carborundum compound. We paint that on the, uh, the surface of our metal and buff it. And it gives us kind of a satiny sheen. We don't want a real high uh, shine on that metal. We want just a nice semi-gloss shine. So we're going to go ahead and buff off our bolt and our carrier and our small, small parts and get those ready. And then we're going to scrub them off in the parts cleaner and we'll uh, start our assembling process from there. Well, we've just come back from our buffing wheels over behind me here and uh, we've been working on this little light 20 uh, Auto 5 receiver. And we buffed off the magazine tube, got nice and slick. And the reason I do that because these bronze pieces, they slide on this magazine tube. And uh, if that tube is uh, cruddy and dirty and, you know, you leave the blue on it, they don't slide well. And that, that's one of the biggest problems Auto 5s have is when they get dry, dirty magazine tubes. They'll stop ejecting on you in a minute. And you got to make sure you set your rings right. But anyway, we buffed off this tube. Um, we've uh, gone ahead while we were at it and we gold plated our trigger. And uh, we've assembled our uh, trigger plate here and uh, got all the parts in that. And uh, we have buffed and polished our bolt and our carrier and our operating handle and uh, got all the rust and crud off of those. Now these are nice and shiny. And we scrubbed them off in the tank real good and got all the uh, 
the grit and grime out of them. We're going to check it again to make sure the extractors and all are working. We're always checking for broken and worn parts, uh, firing pins. We'll keep an eye on this, uh, the rails on the uh, locking block. Uh, and uh, anyway, we're ready to start putting this together, and we're going to uh, commence by uh, putting all the parts in the sides of the receiver, the cartridge stops and magazine cut off and um, the carrier latch button and all that. And uh, we'll uh, start assembling here, then we'll kind of proceed on in just a little bit. Now this particular gun here has got roll pins. Uh, some of the early models have an actual screw that goes in that holds these uh, uh, magazine cutoffs and your carrier latch and your uh, cartridge stop. Uh, they actually have a screw. These are the newer models. These have roll pins. You want to make sure you use a roll pin punch because you don't want to uh, get down and uh, get your punch uh, flaring out your uh, parts that are causing problems. It drive down into that roll pin and then you've got real problems, so you want to make sure you use a big enough punch that it doesn't get down in that roll pin. And uh, roll pin punches are good to have a little part on that makes them so they go in better. Uh, and install our springs here, and uh, and we'll get into some other parts we're going to be installing. We're commencing to uh, install our uh, our breech bolt, and uh, our operating handle goes in this, and uh, your link comes down. Then we have a uh, cartridge stop, a spring goes in the bottom. Uh, these have a uh, this uh, particular model has a knurled uh, pin. Sometimes they have a flat on that keeps them from working out, and uh, these parts uh, go in like so. And we have a little slot in the side of the receiver that makes room for it there. And we install them and uh, drive them in. Make sure everything's tight. We're going to put our uh, action spring in. Sometimes the old models have a, a wooden plug here. These new plastic ones last quite a while. They'll break sometimes, but the old wooden ones have to be replaced quite often. But this is a newer model gun with a plastic, so they, they hold up pretty good. We're going to install our uh, carrier, let's say two-piece carrier, split carrier, speed load as they call it. And uh, you've got to put your carrier screws in. They say, well, are these screws uh, marked? How do you know which one goes in which, which side? And I said, well, you got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. They're not marked. Um, uh, you just put one in, try it, and see how it indexes up. And if it indexes up right, then you got the right one. So 50-50 chance of getting those right. Of course, I got this one wrong. Uh, so. No biggie, we just pull it out and slide in the, the, this one, and this one will be the right one. I don't put my lock screws in until I finish everything. All right, we're continuing our uh, assembly process here. We have our uh, bolt in, we put our uh, spring, our action spring back in through here. Got to watch on the old models, these things were threaded and they have a tendency to break off. Uh, this particular one here is a, a silver solder newer model. They don't break off as readily. In fact, it's rare that they do. Um, so we're always watching for things like that. The old ones will crack right where the threads weaken them. Now, the, the important thing on Auto 5 too, you want to get a little heavy oil, a little oil on this action spring. You want a little oil on your uh, uh, carrier dog, and uh, and uh, also in the uh, trigger assembly here. You gotta double check them, make sure your uh, safety sear is working properly. Uh, it should drop off first before the um, uh, interrupter catches. Uh, let's let's go. Uh, we're gonna check if that works. We want a little uh, uh, oil on the carrier spring here. Some of the early models also have uh, uh, a hammer that doesn't have a roller on. These have rollers, which are good. If they don't have a roller on them, you gotta watch those. You gotta. They really need a drop of oil there because they, they bind sometimes and the hammer uh, will lock uh, gall and bind down and won't release. Uh, you wouldn't think they'd do that, but they sure do it. So um, then we're going to uh, carefully slip this in. We slip it in from the rear, the trigger plate, so your uh, uh, carrier spring will catch that carrier uh, dog. Then you just kind of rotate it in. Uh, from the front, put your front uh, trigger plate 
screw in. You have to pull back your bolt just a little bit before you can put that rear one in because see, you can't get that to come down in the position where it needs to be. So uh, just pull your bolt back a little and that'll release that. Some guys, I had guys, gunsmiths call me and couldn't understand why they couldn't get that rear uh, trigger plate screw in. I told them to pull back the bolt a little bit and it'll go right in. So we'll go ahead and uh, put these screws in there. Again, we don't put the lock screws in until last. Um, we get everything all uh, in here and indexed up. And sometimes if I'm going to test fire guns or repair or a mechanical job, I um, I don't put the lock screws in until I'm completely done test firing and all. Because if I put them in, it's just something else I've got to take out. So uh, we'll go ahead and kind of get this all indexed up and ready. Then we'll next thing we'll do is install our lock screws and uh, mount the new wood on this gun or the refinished wood. So anyway, we're just in the final process of uh, installing this stock. We've got our uh, uh, our uh, stock retaining screw in. Now we're going to get our lock screw in. Got that in. Now we're going to slide on our recoil spring. And I like to install these, uh, set them up for heavy loads. I just do that uh, kind of the way we did it brown. We always set them at heavy loads, so I do the same. These uh, steel friction rings go bevel up. Bronze ring uh, goes bevel up. You always remember that. And uh, that'll set it for heavy loads. Now, of course, if you were shooting uh, light loads, you want to pull this uh, steel ring off. Now you can put that in your pocket where you'll lose it, or you can take and put it down to turn the bevel down and just put it underneath your uh, recoil spring. And that's just a storage place is all that is. Uh, beats putting it in your pocket because that's how you lose it. But anyway, we're going to set this gun up for heavy loads. Bevel's up. And here's a real critical part too is just a drop or two of motor oil uh, under that bronze ring and uh, put it on and spin it a few times. Now we've got our barrel all cleaned up, ready to assemble. We've polished the uh, uh, the bores on this gun, and uh, we uh, polished the crown. And when we blued it, everything turned black, and uh, we went back and uh, and polished off this uh, black barrel extension, so it all looks factory. And then uh, we're going to slide this barrel into the receiver where it belongs, push it down, and slide her form on. Make sure it seats down good. Got to push your barrel down a little bit to get the seat right. And spin on your cap. Make sure you get it on all the way. And then I like to kind of cycle it a few times to make sure that everything's working freely. And uh, this one's a little sticky, but it's coming around. And uh, yeah, it's going to work fine. And um, of course, then we go back and double check, make sure our safety works. And uh, uh, make sure uh, everything is free free and clear. Sometimes we'll shoot these, off times we don't because we just know they're going to work anyway. We put so many of them together. But that'll be a final finished product. Uh, gun started off a uh, rough, rough condition. We've now got this gun to where it looks like a new Browning Auto 5. Uh, the engraving's all there. It's all good and sharp and crisp. If we were to lose some engraving, we'd have put it back on. This one wasn't really uh, bad enough that we lost the engraving. I thought we would from the beginning, but we didn't. But anyway, that turns out to be a nice looking gun now. Looks a good guy. Probably won't want to take it out and shoot it. Probably put that in his gun cabinet and just leave it there. And, and uh, kind of a collector thing now. So that's what you can do with them. That's, uh, you can start off with a rough one and you can make that thing look like a new gun. And uh, that's where we ended up on this one. Mm -hmm.